Faris was the mastermind of the Friday protest banners in the town of Kafra Ambal that were beamed around the world. Actually in the morning, the feminist group, the elderly, and some students get together to, to protest against the, uh, the social security reforms in Leon in the morning. They were, uh, they were brutally attacked by the Sandinista youth. Hello, my name is Stanley Heller. Welcome to The Struggle. We start with awful news. The assassination in Syria on November 23rd of Raid Faris and Hamoud Janid. The two were Syrian democratic activists in Idlib, Syria. They had opposed the two fascist forces in Syria. Assad's gang and the Islamic extremists of Al-Qaeda and its imitators. Apparently, the two were killed by Al-Qaeda. Faris was the mastermind of the Friday protest banners in the town of Kafra Ambal that were beamed around the world and had put the town on the map. They were funny and cutting taking politicians to task and showing solidarity with other causes around the world, like Black Lives Matter. One of Ra'ed's many projects is Radio Fresh, an independent station that airs programs about society, religion, and politics. The radio station, which trained hundreds of Syrians in media work, received funding from the United States State Department one of the few progressive things the U.S. did in Syria. Trump stopped it. Faris never stopped advocating for civil society groups in Syria. He said, I refuse to give up creating a new Syria, and the only way to build an accountable democracy and true freedom is through a vibrant civil society of free and impartial media and an informed public. Hopefully the new Congress will restore money to Syrian civil society in the name of Ra'id Fares and Hamoud Janid. President Trump had warned of severe punishment for all the killers of U.S.-based Saudi journalist Jamal Khashoggi. But Trump has released an extraordinary, error-filled statement saying essentially, we sell lots of weapons to the Saudi government, so let's drop the whole subject of the Khashoggi murder. For a dissection of that pathetic statement, see SaudiUS.org. And don't forget to sign the petition to Trump to ask him to pressure the Saudis to release Khashoggi's remains to his family. For the link to the petition, see thestruggle.org. Thanksgiving morning, there was a front page story in our local newspaper that was in most newspapers around the country. The eminent organization Save the Children is estimating that 85,000 have died from starvation in Yemen as a result of the escalation of the warfare there that started in 2015 when the Saudi UAE and US bombing and blockading ravaged the country. However, partly as a result of the Khashoggi murder and the non-stop coverage of the open sores of the Saudi regime, Congress is slowly opposing the war. These are pictures of a protest in San Francisco outside the offices of Nancy Pelosi calling on her to take action against the war. Because of this, or by coincidence, Representative Mark Pocan has tweeted that Pelosi will introduce legislation to end U.S. participation in the war. 
on Monday afternoon, the 26th of November, there'll be a protest in New York City and Newark, New Jersey about Yemen. For details, go to Facebook and look for Action Corps New York City. For more about Yemen and a link to phone numbers of your members of Congress, go to SaudiUS.org. Now more about Nicaragua, where a popular revolt was repressed this year. From a program in New Haven, a talk by Erin Dira Vanegas. She's Women's Rights Program Coordinator for the New Haven Leon Sister Cities Program. I have been working for the Sister City Project for 10 years now. I am a mother of two, one seven years old boy and five years old girl. And they are waiting for me in Nicaragua. I'm coming back the 26th. Um, and I miss them really much. <laughs> Um, so, the New Haven Leon Sister City Project, like Chris said, have been working with the uh, rural communities in Nicaragua in the 80s. Um, we actually, in, uh, now we are working in the, in the community of Troilo in Goiena, uh, specifically with uh, um, no formal education for kids of the, of the primary school and with preschool. We also have a food program for this kid and training for the teacher and also um, supplying materials for, for, for the teachers in this, in this rural community. I am uh, the coordinator of delegation and interns in the program and also I coordinate the domestic violence prevention program um, in these two communities of Troilo and Goiana. I have a slideshow but we don't necessarily have to go through but I think that is important that you might be able to see some of the pictures. Um, so like Gay was saying, the feminist movement has been in the street for years. Uh, and actually, um, the feminist movement was a big part of the revolution uh, in, in, in the 79. But the feminist movement took distance of, of, of the Sandinista uh, political party after a speech of Daniel Ortega saying, we really appreciate what you have done for the revolution, but now you came back home and have babies, especially boys, because we need it for our, our army. So since those days, the feminist movement have been very strong denounced uh, Daniel Ortega corruption and, and, and became strong in the 90s when um, Soil America, his stepdaughter, uh, denounced that Daniel Ortega was raping her. Now she lives in Costa Rica in exile, and actually her mother supports Daniel Ortega. So feminist movement have been saying that that is why this woman is now in power as a vice president. Um, what happened in the three day free, in the first three day of protest? They say a lot. Actually, I was working with the high school and the community delegation, and I was in the in the community uh, doing the uh, work with them. And actually, in the morning, the feminist group, the elderly, and some students get together to to protest against the uh, the social security reforms in Leon in the morning. They were uh, they were brutally attacked by the Sandinista youth. That it's a, a, an organization that worked for the interests of the government, and also by paramilitaries in front of the police. Uh, so they were hitting uh, the elderly people, ha hitting the women. Actually, my friend stayed uh, in a local business uh, for almost five hours that day because the Sandinista youth was outside waiting for them um, to, to attack them. Uh, in the first, like he said, these images became viral in, whole the, country, in the whole country. And, and, and suddenly more people was coming to the protest uh, and in the first three days of protests, more than 10 uh, protesters were, were killed by the police and the paramilitaries. Um, uh, in Leon, uh, 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 actually it, was, it, it got very heavy. I joined the protest as soon as I left the delegation in the airport. <laughs> uh, so I just went from the airport to the protest in, in, in the 20 the 20th of April, and that day uh, they burned uh, um, the Kung, which is a, a, a building from the National University, because one of the, of the most important things that the, the students are asking is the autonomy of the university, right? Um, 
I think and in Leon we have been talking about this that and I don't know if you mentioned it but uh, Daniel Ortega may think that you know we kill a couple of students and then they go home then everybody everybody everything's gonna be normal again but what happened is the opposite people was recognizing the right to the to the no violent protest and people were really angry because police and paramilitaries was attacking the march and killing people uh, so more people was joined to the marchers and all around the country and violence just was uh, increasing you know um, to the point that they they have killed according to human rights organization more than 450 uh, protester uh, more than 800 people is missing now in Nicaragua and more than 500 people have been arrested because in the context of the protest um, and what we did in Leon is between feminist movement, between the uh, civil society, between the student and some member of the <coughs> private company, we get together to create a network of humanitarian support because the student wasn't able to come back to their houses. They were being hunted by the police and paramilitaries. Actually, my sister is now in a safety house because she was given her house as a, a safety house for a couple of students in Leon. And they were caught um, after, a, after a march in Leon. Uh, so she's not able to come back to her house right now. We also were providing, uh, we also were providing medicine because the public hospital didn't open their their uh, doors for the uh, uh, protester who was hurt in the context of 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 of, of violence. Uh, actually, Daniel Ortega gave the order to not uh, give medical attention to the protester who was uh, being uh, hurt by the police and paramilitaries. And, uh, and then he changed this strategy saying, okay, let them in and then you call the police and paramilitaries and we we'll put them in jail. So a lot of people, a lot of the protesters now are in jail being accused of terrorism, including the students, some member of the, actually a couple of members of the, of the dialogue table because Daniel Ortega may have called to a national dialogue uh, with the different sector <coughs> of the movement, but actually have been, he has been giving this double speech this double moral speech, you know, and he even said the first day of the dialogue, we there have not been anybody who have been killed by the police, and the student have the list of the of 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 of, of the protester who was being killed by 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 the police and paramilitaries. Um, we also organized food for the people who was for the people who was defending the barricade. Only in Leon, we have more than 400 barricades for one month and a, and a half. We, we, we wasn't able to go to the community and work. People was going out of the houses just to go to the market and come back before 12 o'clock because we were afraid that something happened. And also because this, does, this movement doesn't have a, leader, a, a real leadership, you know, there are so different sectors. Um, in the context of the barricade, there were they, they were it was sexual assault was happening. Uh, teenagers who was drinking alcohol and using drugs, mostly of them four teenagers, uh, without without education. Um, so the government came with this plan of the cleaning plan, and they use and they say, well, since there are so many barricades, you know, did this happen in Leon? I don't remember if in any other city. We are going to, to do the cleaning plan to recollect the garbage to avoid disease. So, but the real, the, 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 the real meaning of this uh, cleaning plan was to uh, take out the barricades and the way they do it was using the caravan of death, uh, as we call it. They were shooting to the people that was uh, defending the barricades. Only in my neighborhood, in a, in a period of two hours, three teenagers were killed by the police and paramilitaries. Um, and actually, the forms of resisting of the of the student and of the protester were metal things, you know, uh, throwing a stone, using motors that a motor is not gonna to kill you. Uh, while the police and paramilitaries were using uh, guns, uh, war guns. Is that how do you call it? So these are some some picture of the barricades in different places of Nicaragua. So you can see it. The massacre on Mother's Day was something really hurtful for a lot of people in Nicaragua. The mother who were losing uh, their child in the context of the of the protest 
they organize in Managua and they start with this movement the Las Madres de Abril to like to to try to create a, na a network of support between them but also to denounce to ask for justice not only in a national level but also international level so they made a call of solidarity to be to do this big march in Managua in Mother Day, nobody thought that they uh, the police or paramilitary was going to attack the, mar the march. However, they put a sniper in the roof of the of the building, and only that day, 20 people got killed by police and paramilitaries. Um, the, well, so yeah, I have been uh, like he said, you know, a context of of a lot of violence, a lot of violation of human rights. Um, People is afraid. When I have, I go I go to work and I want to be back at five o'clock in my house because you know it's it's too dangerous to be outside. Now we are kind of a, a, on a second stage of the repression, which is uh, uh, hunting witches. We call it, we call it because police or paramilitaries go to your house and they kidnap you without any charge, without a legal order, and they just uh, make a case against you to put you in jail just because you have been part of the protest or helping somehow. Um, this also is, is giving a lot of stress in Nicaraguan people. Mental health is going to be one of the things that we are going to need work really hard for everybody, even for kids, uh, for adult people, for elderly people, people who have been or hasn't been in the protest. I remember my kid saying to me, my seven-year-old boy saying to me in the context of the barricade, "Mom, I am sick of this. You know, I want to join the I want to join the struggle so we can win faster, so I can go to school, I can go to football, I can go to swimming, and and, and yeah, we you know it, it's a lot of, it's a lot of stress and and who is taking care." Uh, of the people who are human rights defenders, that is, is another question, you know. So these are some of the things that we um, think that we might be working in the future as New Haven Leon Sister City Project, but we are uh, struggling with that. Um, also, we wanted to have, uh, we still wanted to have delegations, but we recognize that it's too dangerous right now. So we are uh, maybe we are working with Chris to create a plan to have people there who knows about the risk and is still is willing to go to help with this kind of of, of issues. Yeah, I don't know what uh, what else. Yeah. Um, <laughs> something happened today. Oh well, yeah. Actually, we were seeing in the social media yeah. that um, there was a march in Managua, and it was called uh, "We Are the Voice of the Political Prisoners." And they were attacked by the police and paramilitaries. Uh, I was I was checking the Facebook uh, post of my friend, and they say that at least six people got her hurt by the police uh, with a, a bullet, and a lot of people was hitting uh, by the Sandinista youth and the paramilitaries. And according to different witnesses, more than 40 people was kidnapped today. And that, that was being part of that march. Yeah. I can talk a little bit more just like clarifying a couple of things. Um, the overall like movement is to reclaim the country and also to reclaim Sandinismo. I wanted to be very clear that there's a difference between the revolutionary organizers from the 80s and Ortega as a political authoritarian party right now. There's very there's two different con um, currents. Also, actually, the first kind of Sandinista dissidents happened in the 90s, where they didn't like where things were going, and they formed their own party to, to kind of stay true to true Sandinista ideals. So right now, at the beginning, there were these really beautiful images of the silhouette of Sandino not being attacked. Instead, instead of having the black and red, which is the Sandinista flag, they painted it with the blue and white, which is the Nicaraguan flag. So there's definitely some respect to the revolution, and there's definitely some respect to everything that was fought really hard for in the 80s. Um, but now there's a recognition that things are very different. Um, but I do not think that Sandinismo is going to have like a comeback, for example. Um, 
the biggest other thing is to reclaim Nicaragua. As, as you see, a lot of the like aesthetics of the protests are blue and white, which um, represent the Nicaraguan so people and the Nicaraguan Canada. flag. Um, so that's kind of been the symbol for the resistance against the red and black of the Orteguistas. Um, so there is very strong nationalist kind of tendencies in this. And I know when I say nationalist, it kind of, um, it's odd to think about that in the context of the United States and how like nationalist movements have been like co-opted by the far right, for example. But in Nicaragua, it's what brings together a country um, that has a very hard history of struggling against foreign and local intervention. Um, in terms of the Catholic Church, I think everybody underestimated their role because we all thought that they were going to support Ortega. We all thought that they were going to side with the Ortega government because they, they've done so in the past. They helped Ortega win the elections in 2007. So right now when the Catholic Church um, stood by with the protesters in kind of, of a Monsignor Romero kind of liberation theology approach, um, echoing El Salvador, it was really, really powerful to know that we had their support and a lot of churches were actually the first safe houses because we thought that the government wasn't going to attack the churches, but they actually did. They actually even went inside of churches or um, shot at churches where protesters were seeking aid at. So the division between the government and the Catholic Church has never been so clear right now to the point where the Catholic to the point where the government has claimed that the Catholic Church are also terrorists or are also CIA agents, for example. Um, it's important to recognize as well that about um, over 25,000 Nicaraguans have fled to Costa Rica. Costa Rica being like the largest Nicaraguan diaspora. Um, after Costa Rica, we have Miami, then some places in LA and San Francisco, <laughs> but then Barcelona is the other big um, concentration of where Nicaraguans are at um, right now and that in itself needs to be addressed internationally like this this 30,000 Nicaraguans looking for refugee um, and escaping because of political instability and a crisis it's, it's a inter international matter um, but and another thing that I wanted to mention is that a lot of people have taken have tried to take advantage of this crisis so since April, things have been kind of suspended and it's been like um, everybody wanted to be the leader or represent the movement. Specifically like the right wing political parties wanted a piece of the pie of everything, but they've been kind of pushed to a side, which has been really good. But for example, in one of the barricades or in the universities, some of people in control of those sectors weren't necessarily students. Mm -hmm. There were local, um, local gang members that were also up, were also wanted to um, join, but then it was it was so plural and diverse, and every city experienced different things that it's hard to quantify the movement as this one singular push. It was literally going in a lot of different directions. So that's been a thing that we had to negotiate: is like how do we bring together such different sectors to have consensus and agree upon certain things but without proposing leaders. Because as soon as you propose a leader, the government knows who to kidnap and who to attack and the media knows who to discredit. So one of the main features of the movement has been horizontal and leaderless, which is, in my opinion, the first time in Nicaragua in a, wa in a, in a while. And we've learned from um, social movements here, but also like the Zapatistas that are also somewhat leaderless and of, of, of movements in, in northern, um, in, in Kurdistan, for example. Um, so that's been really interesting to, to see how all these movements have really new ways of organizing that I've never experienced um, in Nicaragua before. And one, one quick story that I wanted to say was when I visited one of the occupied universities in in Managua, which was like three blocks away from my house, um, I got a tour of the facilities and how they were organized. They had enough supplies to survive like three months 
without any without anything. Um, they manage to um, appropriate different trucks and tractors to protect um, this large university, which like housed about like thirty thousand people. But at the day of the occupation, occupation, there were about like two hundred to three hundred. But the person that was giving me the tour said, "Yeah, in the geology department, we have diamonds. Like we have access to diamonds that if we were to sell in the black market, this would be over." Like we would have enough funding to like do a lot of stuff, but they said like no, we don't want to do that. We want to come back and be students. We want this to be over so that we can get our education, and we want this student. We, we they didn't want to trash the university because they wanted to use it after everything was done. They didn't want to like give away and sell all these stuff because they were resources for future students there. So that was really important to know that what the majority of the people want is to go back to school and to go back to how things were but without Ortega um, and right now um, a lot of these students have now been expelled at least like four of my friends have been expelled from Unan but I, I believe about like 50 students were also expelled for participating in protests mm -hmm. so these are students that have spent like four or five years of their lives in education expecting a degree but now they can't finish that degree because they're claimed to be terrorists or participants of, of the movement. And, and this terrorist law was just approved in July because the government controls the legal system. So they just quickly wrote a draft on like whoever is protesting against the government is a terrorist. And they've actually incriminated over 100 people under this new terrorist law, but without any proof, without any, proof, without any kind of um, defense they just grab you and then the next thing you know you're they they sh they show these on national television it's like we captured the terrorists that were behind the attempted coup and there's like young people like 18 19 20 22 year old organizers a lot of feminist organizers a lot of queer organizers a lot of students a lot of campesinos just being presented as terrorists and it's really sad because we know that they won't be able to come out until Ortega is, is um, changed. Before I go, I want to mention a new interview I did with historian and veteran activist Lenny Brenner. Go to thestruggle.org and into our YouTube section. That's our program for today. See you next week at this time. I'm Stanley Heller for The Struggle.